Tyke, a place where the vast, empty expanses often led its inhabitants to rely heavily on each other. The sight of such a vulnerable giant stirred the community's spirit of care and responsibility, word quickly spread, and soon, a group of locals, including experts in wildlife rescue, convened to strategize a rescue plan. They gathered medical supplies, tranquilizers, and food, aiming to provide immediate relief and, hopefully, a chance at recovery for the polar bear. The group approached with caution, guided by Alexander who had kept a vigilant watch over the bear. They used a tranquilizer to safely sedate the bear, minimizing stress on the animal and danger to themselves. Once subdued, the vets conducted a quick examination, confirming malnutrition and several injuries likely caused by the harsh realities of life in the unforgiving Arctic. The community's swift action turned into a larger discussion about the implications of their changing environment. They pondered on how climate change might be impacting the local wildlife's natural habitats, pushing these majestic creatures to the brink of survival and into human-populated areas in search of sustenance. As the bear slowly regained strength through careful feeding and treatment, it became a symbol of the community's resilience and compassion. The incident not only brought the people of Tyke closer together but also raised their collective awareness about the broader environmental challenges facing their region. Alexander, who had initially been shocked by the sight of the bear, felt a deep sense of accomplishment and connection to his fellow citizens in the natural world they shared. The bear's recovery was followed with keen interest by the community, and plans were made to eventually release the animal back into the wild. Once it was deemed strong enough to survive, this event, a poignant reminder of the vulnerability of Arctic wildlife, instilled a renewed commitment among the people of Tyke to advocate for sustainable living practices and to protect the delicate balance of their Arctic ecosystem. In the remote expanse of the far north, Alexander's approach was calm and deliberate, designed to offer comfort to the distressed polar bear he had stumbled upon. His initial hesitation was swiftly overshadowed by a strong impulse to assist the vulnerable creature. As he cautiously assessed the situation, the bear appeared more in need of help than it did threatening, seemingly recognizing Alexander's benevolent intentions despite the physical distance he maintained. A profound empathy and respect for the bear welled up in Alexander, softening his demeanor as he was moved by the desire to help this majestic animal that fate had placed in his path. Alexander's mind raced with potential ways to aid the bear, each thought carefully balanced with the necessity of staying prudent near such a formidable yet unpredictable beast. Driven by a powerful urge to intervene, he noted the bear's subdued response, a slight nod and a weary look in its eyes betrayed its exhaustion and possible pain, indicating it was on the brink of collapse, likely due to injuries or sheer desperation. Aware that the bear had wandered perilously close to human settlements and recognizing its precarious state, Alexander swiftly resolved to act. He rushed back to his cabin, determined to collect food and medical supplies. He gathered leftovers of fish, assuming these would appeal to the bear, along with a basic first aid kit. Returning to the site, Alexander continued to speak in gentle tones, edging closer with the food. He carefully placed the fish at a safe distance and observed as the bear slowly began to eat. Each movement labored and exerted with great effort, heartened by the bear's acceptance. Alexander seized the opportunity to tend to the animal's wounds, gingerly cleaning them with disinfectant wipes from his kit. Each careful touch deepened their mutual trust. As he worked, the initial shock of the bystanders gradually turned into a supportive curiosity. Alexander's compassionate actions initiated a community-wide effort to save the bear, transforming initial fears into a collective concern. At the village's core, the narrative continued to evolve. The sudden appearance of the polar bear had initially filled the local community with apprehension. Alexander spread the news among the townspeople about this unexpected visitor, sparking a spontaneous assembly for discussion in the town council room. Filled with community members eager to address the situation, tense discussion, the gathered villagers found themselves at a critical juncture, with Zania, a respected long-time inhabitant, leading the charge. The atmosphere was charged with apprehension, with her arms crossed and a resolute expression, she expressed her deep concerns about the bear's proximity to their community, emphasizing the potential danger to their children and the need for swift action, echoing Zania's sentiments, Pavel, who owned the local general store, shared his own apprehensions. He reminisced about past incidents where bears had posed real threats to human safety. Pavel questioned the wisdom of waiting until the bear, driven by hunger or fear, became a direct threat. He urged the community to take proactive steps to ensure their safety, 
emphasizing the urgency of the situation. In the midst of this fraught conversation, Alexander, a mediator among the villagers, addressed the crowd. He acknowledged the palpable fear and suspicion among his neighbors but urged them to consider the current state of the bear. He described the bear as more scared and injured than threatening, noting its diminished mobility and lack of aggressive behavior. Alexander's empathetic insights opened the door to a more measured discussion on how the community could handle the situation with both prudence and compassion. Tanya, who was newer to the village and had previously lived in a bustling city, brought a fresh perspective to the debate. She spoke with compelling clarity, urging her fellow villagers to think ethically about their next steps. She challenged them to consider what their actions toward a distressed animal would say about their character and humanity. Her thought-provoking questions momentarily calmed the heated debate, prompting the crowd to reflect more deeply on their choices. Seizing the moment of reflection, Alexander proposed a balanced plan. He suggested a two-day period during which he would monitor and assist the bear demonstrating that it could be helped without endangering the community. He detailed his approach, explaining that if the bear showed signs of improvement and remained non-aggressive, they should continue to observe and aid it. Conversely, if there was no improvement, he would agree to halt his efforts. His proposal offered a middle ground. Aiming to address the concerns of both the bear's well-being and the community's safety, Despite some initial reluctance and skepticism from the village council and individuals like CIA and Pavel, the council eventually agreed to the plan, albeit with some reservations. This decision marked a pivotal moment, reflecting the community's willingness to explore compassionate solutions while maintaining their vigilance for safety, monitoring the bear's condition and adjusting their care techniques as necessary. They made sure to maintain a quiet and calm environment around the makeshift refuge to facilitate the bear's healing process. Community members who had initially been skeptical began to show interest, with some even dropping by to offer additional supplies like blankets and more fresh fish. This collective effort fostered a sense of unity and purpose among the villagers, turning earlier apprehensions into a supportive collaboration. Alexander, with the invaluable support of Tanya and a steadfast group of volunteers, had swiftly responded to the village council's decision to give the bear a chance at recovery within a stringent two-day timeline. They set up a rudimentary but effective shelter on the sandy shores near where the bear was discovered, utilizing scavenged materials such as driftwood and old tarps, and with tools generously lent by empathetic villagers, they constructed a temporary sanctuary that was both sturdy and protective against the coastal weather. Alex's immediate focus then shifted to addressing the bear's critical needs which encompassed a tailored diet and urgent medical attention, the local fishermen contributed by providing freshly caught fish, a suitable food source for the bear, while Alex and his team applied basic veterinary care using first aid supplies they had on hand. Initially wary, the bear gradually began accepting nourishment directly from Alex. A hopeful sign of burgeoning trust and adaptability in its new temporary habitat, Tanya diligently documented every step of the bear's recuperation journey. Her comprehensive records included detailed observations, photographic evidence, and continuous behavioral assessments to watch for any signs of distress or aggression. Remarkably, the bear showed a predominant focus on its recovery, exhibiting no aggressive behaviors, which was a positive indicator of its adaptability and resilience. Encouraging progress was evident by the end of the first day. The bear's breathing became more stable, and its movements showed increased fluidity. Though still somewhat restrained, these subtle yet promising signs uplifted the spirits of Alex and his dedicated team, reinforcing their belief in the possibility of a successful rehabilitation. The arrival of a veterinarian on the morning of the second day, whom Tanya had managed to contact from a neighboring town, marked a significant advancement in the care regimen. After a thorough assessment, the veterinarian administered antibiotics to treat the bear's wounds and started a course of vitamins to bolster its strength. The bear is showing incredible resilience, noted the vet, offering Alex and his team an encouraging affirmation of their efforts. Throughout the rest of the day, the team continued their vigilant care, constantly adjusting their approach based on the bear's responses and needs. The growing involvement of the community and the visible improvements in the bear's condition cultivated a hopeful atmosphere, as residents and rescuers alike began to envision the possibility of a positive outcome from their collective endeavor. Alex and his team dedicated their time to nurturing and providing medical care for the bear, while also engaging with the intrigued villagers. They took the time to explain their efforts and stress the importance of their mission in wildlife conservation. 
transforming the community's initial fears into a sense of wonder and interest. As the evening of the second day approached, Alex prepared for a crucial presentation to the community council. The bear had made remarkable progress in recovery, showing no signs of aggression. Alex was hopeful that these positive developments would help sway the council's opinion and enhance the community's understanding of the significance of rescuing and rehabilitating local wildlife. In the calm yet slightly tense atmosphere of the municipal hall, a crowd of local residents gathered, their expressions a blend of anxiety and curiosity. They were all eager to learn more about the bear that had become a central topic in the village, armed with meticulously organized data. Vivid photographs, and a detailed veterinary report, all prepared by his colleague Tanya, Alex was ready to make a compelling case to the community. The villagers, who were initially fearful, now appeared keen and attentive, ready for updates on the bear's condition. As Alex and Tanya set up for their presentation, the room brimmed with a quiet sense of anticipation, having initiated his efforts with a calm and assured demeanor two days earlier. Alex now faced the challenge of demonstrating the bear's potential for full recovery and its broader implications for wildlife conservation. He addressed the villagers, reassuring them that the bear could recuperate fully without posing any threat to their safety. He paused for a moment to let his words sink in, then highlighted the collaborative efforts of several brave locals who had assisted in the bear's care. Thanks to these commendable efforts, significant progress had been made. He announced, Alex then shared how the bear had not only shown signs of physical recovery but had also started to display a newfound gentleness in its interactions with humans. To vividly showcase this transformation, striking images were displayed, illustrating the bear's journey from a state of near immobility and severe injury to actively exploring its environment and enthusiastically eating. The powerful visual evidence, coupled with Alex's thorough explanations, effectively transformed the villagers' apprehensions into hopeful intrigue. This shift encouraged the community to rally together with a unified goal of ensuring the welfare of this local wild animal. As Alex wrapped up his presentation, the room, previously filled with a nervous quiet, burst into lively discussions about the bear's significant progress, reflecting a newfound communal interest in and commitment to wildlife conservation. In the quaint village of Chikia, Tanya, with a meticulous touch, distributed copies of a detailed report prepared by the veterinarian. This report highlighted the significant improvements in the health of the local bear, along with its non aggressive behaviors. Her actions reinforced the village's commitment to the long term health and safety of both the community and the wildlife. Alexander addressed the gathered villagers, easing their concerns by emphasizing that the bear had exhibited no threatening behaviors. He stressed that although the bear was a wild animal, it had shown that it could live in harmony with the human population if given a proper chance. His reassuring words resonated with the audience, softening their initial apprehensions and replacing them with nods of agreement. During this assembly, a member of the Community Improvement Association, CIA, who appeared more approachable than usual, voiced a critical question, Alexander, your report and the photographs are persuasive, but how can we ensure our community's safety if the bear continues to inhabit our area, anticipating such inquiries? Alexander explained their plan to employ continuous monitoring of the bear with assistance from wildlife experts. By fitting the bear with a tracking device, the team could monitor its movements closely, ensuring it kept a safe distance from residential and community areas. Pavo, who had been somewhat skeptical, raised a question about the financial implications, who will cover the costs of this monitoring? Tanya was prepared with an answer, explaining that they had established a fund to finance the project, with substantial backing from many villagers. Additionally, they could seek grants from wildlife conservation organizations. This project is more than just supervising a bear, it's an opportunity for our village to lead in wildlife conservation and to demonstrate our commitment to these initiatives, she elaborated. After a period of earnest discussion, the council, filled with a sense of hopeful anticipation, came to a decision, considering the thorough evidence and detailed presentations provided, they declared their support for the ongoing monitoring and integration of the bear into the local environment. This resolution marked a significant advancement in community-led wildlife conservation. In the community hall of Chikia, applause broke out and a tangible sense of relief filled the air as Alexander's proposal received unanimous approval. Not only did key figures like the CIA representative and Pavel express their backing, but there was also a visible sense of pride among community members for endorsing a mission that championed both human security and wildlife recovery. Each day, 
Alexander made trips to visit and care for the bear that he and the community were working to rehabilitate, providing it with nourishment and fresh water. This routine not only helped in the bear's recovery but also strengthened the bond between the community and the local wildlife, fostering a shared sense of responsibility and coexistence, bear's mental sharpness and its physical well-being. Over time, Alexander's initial cautious interactions with the bear evolved into a profound and enduring friendship. From the early days of maintaining a safe distance, the bear gradually began to close the gap, signaling its increasing comfort and trust in Alexander's presence. This growing rapport culminated in a touching scene, captured by a local reporter, in which Alexander was seen tenderly hand-feeding the bear. This moment, emblematic of their deepening trust and mutual respect, quickly captivated the hearts of the local community and soon captured wider attention, becoming a symbol of the extraordinary relationship that can develop between humans and wildlife. In an effort to further enhance this unique bond, Alexander introduced robust, large-scale toys like oversized durable balls to the bear's environment. These were not just for amusement but also served as tools to keep the bear engaged and active, fostering a deeper connection between them. The sight of the bear frolicking with these toys filled Alexander with a mixture of joy and a heightened sense of responsibility towards the creature's welfare. The progression of their relationship was pivotal for the bear's rehabilitation, it provided the animal with both comfort and a renewed sense of security in its new habitat. Meanwhile, a compelling story of recovery unfolded as Dr. Mina, an enthusiastic and compassionate veterinarian from a nearby locale, teamed up with Alexander, a devoted wildlife advocate, to facilitate the healing of the injured bear. Together, they developed a comprehensive plan focused on rehabilitation which included a tailored diet aimed at recovery, appropriate medications to manage pain, and regular health assessments to track the bear's progress. Under their careful supervision, the bear began to show significant signs of improvement, its coat regained its luster, and it started to put on weight, clear indicators of its burgeoning health. The bear's increasing inquisitiveness about its surroundings was another positive sign of its recovery. Alexander and Dr. Mina meticulously adjusted their care strategies to enhance the healing process. They constructed a spacious, secure enclosure where the bear could safely explore and regain its physical strength, which was crucial for its overall recovery. Throughout this period, the bear exhibited impressive cognitive abilities, interacting keenly with its caregivers and adapting to its environment. This was a testament to the successful efforts of Alexander, Dr. Mina, and the supportive local community of Chikia. To stimulate the bear's mind and maintain its well-being, Alexander devised cognitive exercises, including problem-solving tasks that encouraged the bear to locate hidden food treats. These activities were crucial in keeping the bear mentally stimulated and physically robust, highlighting the holistic approach taken in its ongoing rehabilitation journey. Experts in Employing Advanced Tracking Technologies Alexander carefully mapped out a comprehensive release strategy. This strategy was informed by extensive observations of the bear's behavior and gradual improvements in its physical health and mental sharpness, reflecting its readiness to return to the wild. The bear's recovery journey was not just a medical challenge but also a profound emotional process that demonstrated the animal's resilience and Alexander's unwavering commitment to its well-being. The local community, initially skeptical, became increasingly supportive as they observed the bear's remarkable recuperation and Alexander's dedicated care. This shift in public sentiment was crucial in overcoming the initial doubts many held about the project. The controversial proposal put forth by Harold, a persuasive and influential local businessman, aimed to capitalize on the bear's situation by turning its recovery into a local spectacle. He envisioned constructing a large, secure enclosure in the village center where tourists could come to observe the bear arguing that this could generate significant economic benefits for the community. Alexander, however, was deeply troubled by this idea. In a passionate speech during a crowded community assembly, he defended the bear's right to a life free from exploitation. This bear is not for public amusement. We pledge to aid its recovery and release it back to its natural habitat. Not to exploit its plight for financial gain, he contended, his voice resonant with conviction. The community was sharply divided by Harold's proposal, while some saw the practical economic benefits. Many others, inspired by Alexander's dedication and ethical stance, felt a profound moral obligation to protect the bear and return it to its natural environment. At this critical point, Alexander proposed a transparent voting system to resolve the debate, ensuring that every community member could have a say in the bear's future. 
this approach was designed to balance economic interests with ethical considerations, reflecting the collective will of the community. The tension during the village assembly was palpable, everyone keenly aware of the significance of their decision regarding the bear's fate. Ultimately, the community, influenced by Alexander's compelling ethical arguments, voted against the proposal to create the enclosure, choosing instead to prioritize the bear's well-being and freedom, relieved and grateful for the community's support. Alexander expressed his thanks and committed to making the bear's reintroduction into the wild a collective victory, energized by the decision. He began intensive preparations for the bear's return to its indigenous habitat, collaborating with wildlife experts and utilizing the latest in ecological research and tracking technology to ensure a successful reintegration, worked so diligently to reintroduce to the wild years earlier, in a dramatic turn of events. Alexander found himself face to face with the bear he once nurtured, this unexpected reunion amidst the harsh winter elements was nothing short of miraculous, cheeky now fully adapted to the wild, seemed to recognize Alexander, with a calm demeanor, the bear approached him, its presence providing a sense of safety and warmth in the biting cold, Alexander, overwhelmed with emotion, felt a renewed sense of vigor. The bear's unexpected appearance not only offered him physical warmth but also reignited his spirit, giving him the strength to persevere, Cheeky stayed by Alexander's side until the storm subsided, guiding him through the white blanket of snow back to the outskirts of the village. The bond they had formed during their time together had endured, illustrating the deep and lasting connection that can exist between humans and wildlife. Upon a safe return, Alexander shared his incredible survival story with his fellow villagers, who were equally amazed and moved by the tale. This experience deepened the community's appreciation for the natural world and reinforced the importance of wildlife conservation efforts. It also served as a poignant reminder of the impact of their collective efforts on individual lives both human and animal, as Alexander recounted the events. The village was abuzz with discussions about the intertwined destinies of humans and animals and the mysterious ways in which nature often comes full circle to aid its stewards in times of need. This extraordinary encounter not only marked a milestone in Alexander's life but also in the life of the community, fostering a renewed commitment to preserving and respecting the wilderness and its inhabitants, years earlier, in a gripping moment filled with uncertainty. A bear cautiously approached Alexander, nudging him gently with its snout. This unexpected contact ignited a glimmer of hope in Alexander, as the bear's timely appearance amidst such dire circumstances felt nothing short of miraculous. Under the bear's careful guidance, Alexander was able to navigate through the dense, blinding snowfall, trusting its primal instincts. The bear led him to a cave that provided a warm refuge from the harsh, icy conditions outside, throughout the cold night. The bear remained by his side, offering both warmth and protection from potential threats. As dawn broke and the storm finally eased, Alexander woke to find the bear still loyally guarding him. With regained strength and the bear's continued guidance, he was able to reach the outskirts of the village of Jiki. The villagers, who had been overwhelmed with worry during Alexander's absence, were ecstatic and immensely relieved to see him return safely, especially with the heroic bear by his side. The bear's pivotal role in saving Alexander's life greatly strengthened the bond between humans and wildlife, elevating this event to a treasured piece of local folklore that would be revered and recounted for generations to come. Initially doubtful, the villagers soon embraced the profound lessons of empathy and peaceful coexistence that this remarkable event demonstrated. We are curious to hear your thoughts on this extraordinary story of survival and friendship. How does learning about such a unique bond make you feel? We would love if you could share your views in the comment section below. This concludes today's tale. If you enjoyed our content, please consider subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. See you next time.